investment in land transport infrastructure that we announced this week. Question number six, the Honourable Amy Adams. Thank you. My question is to the Minister of Housing and Urban Development. Has he seen reports on his Kiwi Build eligibility criteria today that stated needy families who could really use the help will be left out, while a couple of doctors making $80,000 each will happily move into a nice new home? And if so, does he consider his eligibility criteria will ensure that Kiwi Build homes go to those who are most in need? The Honourable Phil Twyford. I haven't seen that report. But I do consider that the Kiwi Build eligibility criteria ensure that homes will be bought by the families most in need in three ways. First, by excluding investors, we ensure the homes go to first home buyers. Two, by setting an income cap at 180,000, we exclude the very well off while ensuring that families such as teachers, tradies, and young professionals whose home ownership has plunged in the last decade can once again have a chance at owning a home. And three, by selling at a fixed price and using a ballot system, everyone will have the same chance. Those on lower incomes will not be outbid by those on higher incomes as they are in the open market. Does he realise that his income eligibility criteria that includes households with incomes up to $180,000 allows households that are in the 15 per cent most wealthy in New Zealand to become eligible for KiwiBuild? Um, I do realise that, and in setting the eligibility cap, we looked at the data and saw that the greatest fall in home ownership in the past decade has been in the 80,000 to roughly 180,000 income range. This income range also comprises half of families with children, and these are the young families who, less than a generation ago, would have realistically expected they would be able to own their own home. The right on the wall. Yes, sorry. Sorry? Me. Me. Oh, no, sorry, I, I called oh. the right honourable Winston Peters. Sorry, I, I... Could I ask the Minister this question? That is, how many submissions has he received from Judith Collins on this matter of housing, and how many has he received from uh, someone who's taken her place while she's temporarily overseas, I think, uh, namely um, Ms Adams? Who's asked the most questions in the past? <laughs> um, order, order. I, the, the Minister doesn't have responsibility for, for members members asking questions. Is the real reason the income caps have been set at more than double the median household income is that he now accepts that he has failed to build houses that will be affordable for truly middle income earners, so he's had to cast the net to include virtually every first home buyer to ensure he can get the few houses he's building sold? <laughs> Mr Speaker, the real reason for the uh, setting of the eligibility criteria is that we've inherited a housing crisis that has, that has, that has dispossessed, that has dispossessed even the sons and daughters of the middle class who have worked hard, who earn good money, but in our country's biggest city find themselves completely shut out of home ownership. Maya Lubick. Supplementary to the Minister, who would miss out if the income cap was lowered or set at the same level as the Kiwi Safer Home Start grant? A couple of teachers with around five years' experience may have an income in the $150,000 range. The government was not prepared to set a cap so low that it would exclude hard-working teachers, tradies and young professionals who now find themselves locked out of the Auckland housing market. Will buyers who are beneficiaries of family trusts that own residential property be eligible to apply for a KiwiBuild home? Well, I don't think that someone with assets, considerable assets, who would have the pick of the homes on the market will choose a modest starter home and go through a ballot process. I just don't think that's realistic. 
Yes. Uh, it was a very straight question it was, it was, asking it was. A member, particular a factual member pressure. Ask, uh, the member should tell us that he doesn't know what his policy says. It's not our intention to place further restrictions on the eligibility criteria. We don't believe that the scenario that the member faces is at all realistic. No, you lose it. Supplement Supplementary to the Minister. Why did the government choose to adopt a higher income limit than the KiwiSaver Home Homestart grant? The KiwiSaver Home Homestart grant has not worked in Auckland and Queenstown. For example, less than 9 per cent of Homestart grants are for homes purchased in Auckland, grossly disproportionate to the number of Auckland first home buyers. The cap is so low that even with the grant available, families struggle to find a home that they can buy. We knew that we needed to make sure that KiwiBuild actually responds to families in need. <coughs> when answers given on his behalf said that properties could be sold directly off the plans to some buyers without these properties going through a ballot, which buyers are going to get this fast track option? In the planning for the sales process for Kiwi Build, we have retained the flexibility for later on in the Kiwi Build process, perhaps years three, four, or later than that, when uh, supply will match or exceed demand, that we, in situations where it won't be necessary to put a, put a ballot in place. And in that case, in that instance, it would be the, the obvious thing to do to allow a direct sale. Question number seven, the Honourable Nikki Kaye. Uh, point of order, Mr Speaker. A point of order.